we are opening the last session of our two working days of conference. And it's my great honor and pleasure to give the floor to Ambassador Rui Vinhas, who is the uh, Director General for European Affairs in the Portuguese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, will address us his speech closing with a golden key now uh, our conference. Rui, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nuno. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me in this closing session. Uh, my task here is not very easy because, I mean, I've, I've been able to, to follow uh, the conference, so the usual wrap-up, it's not uh, possible, unfortunately, for my side. And also, uh, Secretary of State Zakarias, uh, uh, as uh, yesterday, has made a, a full presentation, a very complete presentation of what uh, will be our main, uh, our axes, our five axes, or five priorities to, to, to the Portuguese presence in the first semester. So I will not uh, go through that again, and I will try to to approach this from a, a, an angle a, a, a bit different from the, uh, the the big challenges and the big unknowns that uh, that we have uh, both European Union and Portuguese presidency ahead of us in the in the in the in the first semester and in the incoming year. So I mean, in this general political framework, I I, I will start saying that this is a. This is our fourth presidency, and uh, it's it's the it's the first one that we have after the the big economic, uh, uh, huge economic crisis of 2008 2014. Uh, the EU is uh, quite uh, different. Uh, it's uh, the balance of power changed. The way the union operates has changed a lot. The economic growth uh, never went back to previous levels, and as you will know, prosperity. Uh, together with peace and de democracy, were at the center of the European uh, project. It is also, it will also be the first, uh, and I hope the last uh, time that we have a presidency in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it's the first time in history that we respond uh, with an entirely humanistic uh, approach to a pandemic. Uh, human life and health first, but the economic and social uh, cost is very, very serious. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, it occurs not many years after the, the previous economic uh, and financial crisis. It also imposes to us uh, lots of uh, limitations. Uh, the simple fact that physical meetings have to be dramatically reduced affects the, the speed of, with which we conduct uh, dossiers. We have we have witnessed that in, uh, in, in the two previous presidents, the Croatian and the German ones. Uh, also, in, in comparison with our last presidency, it was in 2007, we will have a new institutional framework uh, arising from the Treaty of Lisbon. And why is this important? Because, as you, some of you might, might know, uh, our signature brand used to be the external relations of the European Union. And now it's for the rotating presidency that is more difficult. So we will we'll have, as, a, as Secretary of State Zacharias yesterday presented, we have uh, uh, some initiatives uh, with Africa or a, a summit with the Prime Minister of India uh, in May in Oporto. But, uh, but, but uh, this, this change in the, the, in the institutional framework, it's, uh, it's important. We, we will also begin this presidency with the unprecedented uh, situation of having one less member seated at the table, given the departure of the United Kingdom. And this constituted a political movement that represented the first victory since 1957 of the centrifugal uh, over centripetal forces and in, the, in the European uh, construction process. Uh, it is also a first presidency uh, after the, the great divisor, uh, which constituted the 2015 migration <laughs> crisis. And this is an issue that is still, uh, still there uh, and will, uh, will be with us for many years. The simple fact that we have two continents alongside one very rich and uh, facing a demographic uh, winter and the other one 
very poor and facing a, a demographic booming, uh, uh, it's uh, it takes it it's it's inevitable. We will have to, to tackle and to to live with this and to and to 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 search for uh, lasting solutions and lasting answers to this this issue. The twin transitions, the green and the digital, uh, will impact economically and social and even politically our societies, our economies, and the, uh, the labor markets. That is why we will invest so much in enhancing, in trying to enhance the European social model. This is, as the uh, uh, Secretary of State uh, yesterday mentioned, it's the, the watermark of our presidency, the political brand. Another issue, another element which is new is uh, we are facing all over Europe uh, new, very strong populist, nationalist, and protectionist trends. This is also a new element. And finally, uh, in, in the external uh, ambience, we have a, a great external turbulence worldwide. It is unparalleled, at least with, the, with, the, with our previous presidencies with the liberal order, world order uh, and geopolitical balance under heavy pressure as the multilateral uh, system is openly contested. And we also have a, very, uh, a number of very serious crises in our neighborhood, uh, European neighborhood. The issue of multilateralism is it's, it's a big challenge for European Union because it's one of the things that the EU stands for. And, uh, uh, and, and we have also to go through a, a reflection on, uh, on how a true multilateralism works in a multipolar world. I mean, it has worked in a bipolar and then a unipolar, but we still have to see if it works in a multipolar uh, world. This is, a, this is uh, also an important uh, thing. Then the, the unknowns. I mean, uh, just one month ahead of the presidency, we still have uh, big dossiers, and I'm not going through all of them, but there are many. Uh, there are many and, uh, but after the pandemic, which is a big issue, the financial package is probably the most critical issue. I mean, if I may use a metaphor, our economies are in the ICU, and the, the national budgets have been working as the ventilators. Uh, so far. So we are running out of time. Uh, this is uh, the wrong moment to play power games. We need to unblock uh, this issue soon in order to have the funds uh, running in our economies before the summer. Concluding all the stages of, uh, of the approval process of the financial package uh, in response to the, to the crisis is or will be uh, the overarching priority during our presidency. The, without this, the other priorities are a bit uh, secondary uh, in a way. I will mention also the Brexit as an unknown. I mean, future uh, relations between EU and the UK. Uh, Brexit is a little bit like uh, one of those uh, uh, very good series of Netflix. I mean, already in this, in this uh, fourth year, I mean, we, 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 we never know exactly where, where it finishes and, uh, and how. So deal or no deal, uh, a deal is by far a, a better scenario. In, here in Portugal, we used to, to play during the first phase of the negotiation, the withdrawal agreement that uh, the only red line for Portugal was a no deal. Uh, uh, now we're not saying exactly the same because uh, we, the deal is important, and, uh, but not at any price. Uh, and, uh, but particularly uh, the deal is important because we don't need, uh, for many reasons, economic reasons, political, it's symbolic reasons, but we don't need at this stage another crisis on the top of the, of the, of the, of the pandemic crisis. And as an incoming presidency, uh, uh, it is easy to understand to all of you that we would strongly prefer not to, to start the presidency dealing or managing a, a no deal scenario and with all the, the disruptive impacts of, of that situation. But as I was saying, not in a, at any price, level playing field is a precondition uh, and, uh, and we'll see, we still hope and uh, we are still relatively optimistic that uh, at least a trade, a trade deal, uh, probably the minimums, 
a trade deal will be uh, reached in the in the in coming weeks. Having said all this, uh, uh, um, I think it's very important to understand that this same Europe, uh, with all these uh, problems, internal and external, uh, and permanently fluctuating and, and uh, seesawing uh, between a never fragile union and a never closer union, uh, uh, this very same union uh, uh, had the capacity to provide a united, uh, rapid, robust, uh, bold, and innovative response with the approval of the financial uh, package uh, to fight the, the huge economic and social crisis. I mean, the, our leaders were able to, in July, uh, to, to find a compromise. Uh, and this package uh, not only uh, includes sums that are unparalleled to date, but have a very interesting mix of loans and grants as, as well as the first, the first step uh, towards something close to the, the emission of a common debt. Uh, so in fact, if we uh, take into account the joint governance uh, mechanisms uh, of this financial package, we are on the threshold of a common uh, budgetary policy. So at the same time, the union uh, goes closer and closer and the integration process proceeds. So it's, uh, we have also always to be this uh, into account. We have this into account. Uh, likewise, uh, this is the same union that is clear, uh, that has the clear ambitions of, of leading the, the global climate change agenda uh, and is doing it. Uh, is taking also steps to compete for uh, world leadership in a digital uh, technology and is creating the conditions for a new major investment in, uh, on European industrialization. Um, the same union is also seeking to enhance the social dimension uh, since reinforcing the, the European social model is key to mitigate the impact of the pandemic as well as uh, navigating the climate and digital transitions successfully. Uh, this is the Europe we want to see uh, pursue during our presidency, an ambitious Europe with an agenda that is focused and oriented to results, to citizens and, and, on, and to the future. Uh, and that can respond politically to the hopes, fears and concerns of European citizens. Uh, for instance, in establishing a coordinated and effective vaccination strategy at European scale is key in the first semester of 2021. Uh, exit the Brexit uh, labyrinth it's, uh, and forge a strong partnership with the UK, it's also a, a priority and that we have to tackle. Getting member states to converge on migration issues, it's, it's important, difficult, very difficult, but important. Um, other important issues include or priorities include protecting and deepening the internal market, promoting industrialization of the European economy, as well as uh, the climate, uh, digital and social agendas. And as in all other uh, Portuguese, uh, previous Portuguese presidency, keenly aware that the European Union has interests, uh, responsibilities and the role to play in the world, from its closest uh, neighbors to Asia, Africa, Africa, Latin America, and the transatlantic relations, uh, which have now an opportunity to be revitalized, <coughs> we will also uh, pay a close attention to, 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 the, to the external dimension. Uh, and in all these fields, I mean, we will not be acting in the vacuum because Rather, we will always uh, have our value system to guide us. So this is, I mean, in a nutshell, and uh, I'm not, I'm trying not to repeat what my my Secretary of State said yesterday. <laughs> I, I went through, I mean, the big challenges and the big unknowns. There, there are more unknowns. I mean, for instance, the conference on the future of Europe is still uh, blocked uh, because we don't have a deal on, on who will be sharing. Enlargement is also somehow in a stalemate uh, due to a veto to, to, to the North Macedonia. I mean, there's, uh, which is a bit, 
it's not it's a bit typical to be uh, one month ahead of the presence and having so many question marks and so many unknowns but uh, this is uh, this is life and uh, we we will have to 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 move and to and we are optimistic that we'll do a, a good presidency thank you very much uh, for having me uh, and uh, if 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 you if you if you want to i'm available to to ask your questions uh, with pleasure thank you thank you rui thank you ambassador vinhas for your uh, comprehensive uh, intervention uh, and now i give the floor to lucia Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, thank you, Ambassador, for uh, uh, su summing, uh, summing up your, your uh, priorities as well as uh, illustrating uh, uh, your ideas uh, from the point of uh, Portuguese perspective. Let me, uh, let me add some, uh, some, some remarks from, from our, let's say, European uh, perspective uh, coming from the discussions uh, from the last two days, but also from the experiences uh, we, we have in, in, the, in this manner, more maybe uh, academic, uh, political, but uh, some kind of objective and opinion uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you, you are uh, coming into the presidency in very unprecedented times. I know that I uh, said uh, that uh, Germany uh, six months ago started the presidency uh, with, uh, with the COVID pandemics, but uh, you will be leaving uh, and uh, leading the European Union not only in the times when we are, fight, we are fighting to pandemics, but when we are also fighting for the common values we have in the European Union. Right now, it's not only the issues connected with having the, the budgetary uh, uh, project uh, uh, leave, uh, the uh, common values uh, related to the rule of law uh, adopted, but also uh, from the point of the, of the strategies where we are going. I mean, like uh, it's the issue whether we can in the European project uh, continue in a way to be united, uh, but uh, uh, respecting the differences of uh, 27 nations, 27 uh, sovereign states, which had decided uh, some decades ago to uh, get together on this long journey and to, uh, to get uh, the people uh, living in this uh, European continent uh, some new perspective and uh, some new uh, profits uh, for, their, uh, for their life. Uh, we, we had, uh, or you had, uh, I mean, like colleagues and, 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 uh, and politicians and academics had spoke last two days about uh, the different issues which are uh, influencing the, the ongoing uh, time. I mean, like uh, uh, what we are facing uh, right now, and it's not only connected with the, with the, with the daily life we are uh, living right now. I mean, like how we are fighting uh, and managing the, the pandemic how we are uh, fighting for uh, or, or against the hoaxes, how we are fighting for finding the new vaccine, how we are supporting uh, the economies of the, of the member states. But it's also about the way how we are uh, perceiving the democracy, how we are perceiving and helping the European citizens, how we are making the European institution strengthen. And this is something uh, where uh, the Portuguese is facing uh, many internal and external challenges. It's, uh, uh, it means that we are fighting on uh, uh, two different uh, levels. The internal, where we are fighting for um, common values, where we are fighting uh, for the common project. And How we are looking for the new types of relations with the with the with the uh, United States. How we are uh, considering uh, the uh, position of uh, of uh, the Asian countries. Uh, how we are reflecting uh, the uh, the development in in Africa and the others. And uh, I mean, like uh, of course, uh, all these fights and and and, and challenges. Uh, will be uh, not only um, necessary to somehow, to somehow discuss, but also to act. And this is something where the EU may rely on the capacities of the member states, and it should be the leading presidency where uh, the concrete people, concrete institutions would be able to join the in and, and to make the impact of uh, our ex uh, experts, our decision makers really strengthen 
when we can achieve the consensus and really enforce the consensus into concrete policies, into concrete measures, and in a way to represent the Europe uh, as a united project and as a real actor uh, internally and as well as, as externally, I mean, in the global affairs. I, I'm, I'm really happy that you mentioned that uh, the multilateralism is uh, for Europe something which uh, should be the basis for the communication in international affairs. And I believe that uh, not only uh, our relations with, with the other actors in the world will help to uh, recover from, the, from, this, uh, uh, from this crisis, which is not uh, only economic, health, but also social uh, crisis. Uh, where we can see that uh, based on the on the pandemics that are built, the crisis connected with the, with the different perception, which on, in some way also leads to increase of the of the populism speeches in some states, and which at the end uh, really uh, come to the discussion about uh, about the position of the of the Europe and future of the future of the Europe. So uh, the Portuguese uh, presidency is not only advised to uh, finish unfinished business uh, from, the, from the previous, uh, previous uh, German uh, presidency, but also to uh, take seriously all the small uh, challenges and all the small fights we, have to, uh, we are facing right now. So it means that we really have to focus on a building uh, resilient, strong, social and green Europe. And of course, we should uh, in, this, in this manner to adopt all the, um, uh, all the steps, I mean, like not only decisions, but also concrete policies and implementation to get there. And in this manner, it's uh, important that uh, two, two, two main, uh, two main um, points I, I want to add. The first one is that we should really stand for the common values, which are not only formally stated in Article 2, but which are our common values, the democracy, rule of law, human rights, especially solidarity and uh, uh, the, the economy and, uh, and uh, the representation uh, in, in this manner. And we cannot uh, leave any of this value behind because those values are which give the face to the European, uh, European Union. And the second uh, point uh, I want to uh, conclude in this manner is that uh, we all are responsible for keeping the European project alive. And without uh, taking all the measures and implementing these measures in, uh, in the concrete policies areas, the Europe will not only face this concrete, uh, concrete challenge in the form of a pandemics, but will also uh, challenge uh, the future concept. And uh, from the point of uh, uh, sustainability, we have to, I mean, like we, all the, all the subjects, all the stakeholders, we have to, uh, keep all the, uh, all the steps and uh, adopt all the decisions to build the European Union, to make it uh, still strength to survive this, uh, uh, these unprecedented times and to keep uh, the uh, European Union for the next generations as a, as a project which uh, had been able to survive, which is strong enough and which presents the common ideas and the common path for in the moment at least 27 members, 27 nations and people who had decided uh, for the Europe as, uh, their, uh, as their home. So in this manner, I uh, really uh, keep all the fingers crossed. And I believe that uh, uh, even the experts and the, uh, the, the researchers and uh, the academics can give you uh, some insights in this manner and that the evidence-based approach will be the correct path in adopting the decisions and implementing the decisions under the next incoming six months of uh, Portuguese presidency in the European Union. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia, for your uh, conclusion remarks. And uh, Ambassador Rui Vinhas told us that he would be open if someone would like to raise some questions, two or three questions. So if uh, it's the case, Ambassador v Rui Vinyas is open to answer to one or two or three, three questions. Uh, 
the Ufa. Yes, hello, and uh, thank you so much for a great event. Um, I just have like two questions. It was uh, about EU uh, India summit, uh, and maybe from a uh, geopolitical uh, aspect, as uh, Ursula von der Leyen is talking about. And then the EU uh, enlargement and neighborhood, like Balkan and uh, Eastern and Southern neighborhood. Thank you. Should, should, I, should I answer now? Move yes, on. please. Okay. Well, on, on um, enlargement and the, the previous one was, I'm, I, I lost you in a, for a second. Uh, sorry. The, the second one was enlargement, but the first I didn't listen well. There was some technical. Uh... Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was uh, asking in about India. India. I saw this, India. It's about, about India. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and on, politics. Yeah. I mean, uh, concerning uh, India, I mean, uh, as I, I said in the beginning, we we have always uh, been very active in uh, promoting the, the 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 role of the European Union in the world in the, in our previous presidency, particularly in, in the 2000 and 2007. We have launched, for instance, uh, the the first summits with Africa, the first summit with India, with Brazil, and we have always been very uh, advocates of uh, of uh, of the role of the Union open to the world and the Union active in the world. Uh, as I explained at the beginning, uh, now uh, the ball is more on the side of the institutions, the president of the, of the European Council for one side, and the high representative and the, the external service, European service uh, from the other side. So they, they are the ones who run uh, on a daily basis the, the external relations of the European Union, not, uh, not uh, as used to be the, the rotating presidency. But anyway, uh, we 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 were inspired by also by the model that uh, the Germans were thinking on the, uh, to Leipzig on a summit an informal summit with the Chinese, and we thought that we could do uh, something similar with with India. Uh, why? Because it's important that the 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 EU uh, strengthen its re its its geo strategic partnership with India, and also to balance a little bit the relations between. Uh, the two Asian giants between the European Union and the two Asian giants. And for the other side, I mean, there's a huge uh, economic agenda between the EU and India that is in a stalemate since 2013. And of course, that to, this is an opportunity to try to, to have some progress, in, at least in some of those uh, important elements, uh, investment, trade, etc. So this is uh, the reason, uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, it has been so far very well received, both uh, by the, the Indian the Indian side and, and also by the other member states. Uh, and uh, this is our uh, objective and our rationale on enlargement. I mean, if I if I uh, um, although my background is is is, is foreign policy, and I've been even um, a PSC ambassador for some years, I, I have to, to, to admit that the, the, the three uh, most powerful tools of the European Union to act externally are uh, 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 enlargement, uh, cooperation, uh, uh, and trade. I mean, this, these are the, the, the most powerful and, and the hard, hard power uh, 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 tools that we have. Uh, CFSP has its limitations, as we all know. But uh, so enlargement, it's it's a powerful tool uh, of the of to, to build the project, to the European project, project. But it's also a powerful tool in terms of stabilizing the the the, the neighborhood of, of Europe. In that sense, and for historical reasons, uh, we have also been in the other side. Uh, eight or nine years when we requested uh, admission to the European Union, I think in 77, and we waited until 86. Uh, so we have always been very uh, favorable to enlargements. 
um, and we have been also supporting this one. We have also supported the, the reforms that were proposed by, by some member states and by the Commission that, uh, uh, that has introduced more uh, strict uh, uh, rules and a more demanding uh, approach to, to, the, to the enlargement process. But um, uh, after the, the European, uh, the, the, the Council has decided in March that uh, has given the green light to, to, to go ahead with the two, uh, the, the negotiation process concerning North Macedonia and Albania, we, uh, we think that we should uh, proceed. It's the credibility of the European Union that is at stake. Uh, we have to understand that one of these two countries has even changed its name. Uh, in order to be in the conditions to start negotiations with the with the with the European Union, and uh, at this stage, uh, we uh, we very much uh, favor that we launch the, the 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 process and start with the first uh, intergovernmental conferences uh, uh, for both for both countries. Unfortunately, as you all know, uh, we have uh, there's a problem with Bulgaria, and uh, we we we. The German presidency is trying to 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 solve that problem, to overcome that difficulty. If not, uh, we'll have to 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 embark in the negotiations with those two, with Bulgaria and with the North Macedonia, trying to overcome this that uh, that problem. But I mean, uh, apart from the explanation, we we favor uh, this 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 uh, this enlargement process. Uh, concerning uh, North Macedonia and Albania. The Council has decided it in, in March, so we cannot uh, continue this process of adding, 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 adding new conditions to the, to the conditions that we had before. I don't know if I answered uh, correctly, but uh, if it, this was the, the, the sense of the question, but uh, I've tried. Thank you, Rui. We are now about to close our two days conference. But before that, I would like to renew my thanks to Ambassador Vinyes for honoring us with your presence and for intervention, stimulating intervention. I would like also to renew my thanks to my sincere thanks to TEPSA team and the IPRI team for the fantastic work in organizing this conference. I would like also to thanks to all the speakers and participants who made so interesting and stimulating the conference. And finally, I hope uh, to welcome you all uh, very soon, at least as soon as possible, in a, in a, in a, a, a pandemic-free Lisbon. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you again, Nuno. Thank you, thank you, Rui. Obrigado.